Hello everyone, this is Mr. Hebner, and we are going to be doing a lab on hydrates. Super exciting. So uh, here is the lab sheet we're going to be utilizing. Essentially, uh, if you remember from in class, we said that um, a hydrate is a chemical that has water attached to it. So chemical formula of the hydrate we're going to be using is CuSO4.5. H2O. That is our hydrate. So um, basically it's copper sulfate with five water molecules sticking to it. Um, these are separate molecules, water and copper sulfate. They're just attached. That's what a hydrate is. Whereas anhydrous means it is without water. So what we're going to be doing essentially is heating this copper sulfate pentahydrate. And when we heat it, we're going to be evaporating the water out so that all we have left is the copper sulfate, which is the anhydrous substance. So we have a uh, data table. We're going to be collecting data. Got to get the mass of the evaporating dish, mass of the evaporating dish plus the hydrate. Um, you can have a mass of hydrate of your choice. I would recommend about four grams, a good amount, maybe two. Um, I don't think it actually says, yeah, so two to four. I wouldn't go more than four just because the school has to pay for the chemicals. So, um, let's see. So then if we subtract these two values, get the dish mass out of the hydrate slash dish mass, we're going to get the mass of the hydrate. And then uh, you're going to get the mass of the evaporating dish plus anhydrous substance after you're done heating it up. Um, and then you take this anhydrous plus evaporating dish mass, subtract it, uh, the mass of the evaporating dish, and you're going to get the mass of the anhydrous. To get the last one, mass of water that evaporated, you're going to um, take the mass of the hydrate minus the anhydrous. What's left is your water that evaporated out. That's essentially it. From there, we can do a bunch of mole calculations to figure out the uh, ratio of water to copper sulfate so that we can, in fact, prove experimentally that it is a one copper sulfate per five water molecules. All right, you ready to get started? I am. All right, so the first thing we need to do is goggles. Safety first. Okay. Except for the lab right now, except I got this little dangly badge and I'm using Bunsen burners. I don't wanna have that dangle. So I'm gonna take this off for now, still staff. And setting this up here without burning and messing my computer up. Look at this setup. We have a, what do you call that, a ring stand. Let's put it so that you can see it. <clears throat> we have, right here is a ring. And that's where, um, we have this triangle, but that's more for crucibles. So, hi, there I am. Um, we're going to get a wire mesh which looks like this. There it is, wire mesh. And I'm going to put it right on there because that way my evaporating dish, there it is, um, will be able to stand on it without, you know, falling. All right, so I'm going to get the evaporating dish. Here it is, evaporating dish. And... What we're going to do is, I'm going to pause this video one second just to make sure that it's actually recording. It is. Good. Perfect. Here we go. This is the chemical. Can, can this focus? Let's see. Copper 2 sulfate. CuSO4. Let's look at the hazard label. Oh, where is it? There we go. Ooh, skull and crossbones. All right, looks like I'm going to be dealing with some heavy stuff today. Skull and crossbones just means it's toxic. And, well, what does it say? Danger. Toxic if swallowed may be harmful in contact with skin. Causes skin and serious eye irritation. Good thing we're being safe, wearing our goggles, and doing it right. All right, so first thing I want to do, let me just pause it. i got to get my data book uh, so I can put all the correct data in. 
All right. A little itchy there. So I got my data. Here's my data table. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the mass of the evaporating dish first. All right, so I'm going to carry this over. The mass of the evaporating dish is right here. Got to get the chemical too. Do two birds with one stone. And actually, I should get my my data packet too, so it's all here. Whew, look at that view. All right. So, okay, that's the one. I'm going to turn on the V scale. Hey. Um. And it looks like. I, I don't want you to miss out the fun on this one. Can you see it? It's 45.34. All right. So I'm going to write that down. Right at that top one, massive dry evaporating dish. And the number was 45.34. You need to rewind that and... Um, re-listen, that would be great. It's uh, 45.34 grams. 45. All right, now we got to do the mass of the hydrate with the dish. Got my scupula, also known as a lab scoop. Got my hydrate. Look at that. So we're going to scoop a little bit. Um, there we go. Yeah, let's put a, there we go, that looks good. All right, there we go. It is now, I'll let you see it, 49.21. All right, 49.21. 49.21. That is the mass of my hydrate with dish. All right, guys, let's calculate this out. Okay. What we have is 49.21 is the mass of dish and hydrate, and then 45.34 is the mass of our dish. What we're going to need to do is take 49.21 minus 45.34. Uh, you can plug in your calculator. Um, hey, calculator right here. How convenient. All right, 49.21 minus 45.34 and that's 3.87 so almost 4 grams 3.87 grams that's the mass of the hydrate we are working with all right ready to start heating it up I am all right so back to the experiment we're gonna take the hydrate in the dish and we're gonna start heating it on the Bunsen burner all right Here's a nice little experiment setup. Putting it right on the dish. And let's get this down a little bit so we can see it. Moving this ever so slightly. And here's our setup. I'm actually going to lower this a little bit. So, I'm going to need a striker. I got my crucible tongs so that I can carry it to the balance when I need to get the mass. Got my striker. And I'm going to turn the gas on. So, let's see how am I turning this gas on. I'm going to turn it from perpendicular to parallel. And you can hear that little hiss. That means the gas is on. All right. Come on. There we go. All right, someone had it on a uh, Lemo adjustment setting. Okay, there we go. Look at that. So, now this is the part where I'm going to try to film it without burning my laptop. There we go. Look at that. So, notice how it's a, a nice blue color. Actually, it looks 
great, beautiful blue in person. On the screen, it looks turquoise, which is weird. So, and what we're going to do is we're going to just wait until notice the edges. You might not be able to see it as well on the video, but I can see the edges are starting to get light blue. And what's going to happen is um, that light blue color is going to carry through into the center until the entire thing is a, a light, 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 light blue. If it starts to turn green, that means it's reacting with the nitrogen in the atmosphere, as about 78% of our air we breathe is nitrogen. Is that going to skew some of our data? Absolutely. All right. Now, right now, I'm deciding if I should film all of this or pause it and cut to the chase. It is so interesting, though. And if you look closely, you can see some of the little uh, crystals bouncing a little bit from the heat. A possible source of air could be possibly some of those crystals bouncing out. Um, most of them are staying in. And I do notice on the edge it is turning a little greenish. Um, it's going to take a while for all of that to turn the white color we want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this and let the experiment go on because it is somewhat uneventful and I don't want to pour your brains out by having you watch a pixelated video. All right, let me pause this. All right, so we're back from the pause and what we got here is notice how you don't really see any blue whatsoever. It's pretty white um, and that's where we want to be at. I mean, there's just a faint, faint, you might not even be able to see it on the camera, uh, blue which means just there's a tad bit of water in there left. But for the most part, it's pretty dry. It's pretty anhydrous. All right. So I'm going to put this down so we can view it. Look at that. I'm going to shut off the gas. Let's get that on camera. Look at that. There we go. Make it perpendicular. It's, it's off. And, ooh, I'm not going to touch this because it's super hot. I'm going to use my crucible tongs to uh, get the mats. But first, I'm going to let it cool for about one to two minutes just so um, it can be that much more safe. All right, I'm going to pause it because we're just going to be sitting here looking at it for a minute and a half. All right. All right, good. We are going to get the mass of this anhydrous. Let me go get it real quick. <clears throat> All right. We're going to put it right on the scale. And we're going to record that new mass. And the mass is... Uh, well, I'll read it. 47.79. We're going to write that down. Mass of evaporating dish plus anhydrous substance is 47.79. All right. What we're going to do next is we're going to do some cleanup. I'm going to take this and I'm going to dump it in the trash. There we go. Just like this. that all coming out so I'm going to scrape it and then I'm going to put it on my dirty dish bin when I do the dishes. All right. I'm going to put my lab supplies away. It's a little hot yet so I'm going to let that stay. And we'll leave this up for the next group that won't get a chance to do it because it's virtual, but all right. And I'm gonna put my chemical back where I found it. And I'm going to do the most important part, which is clean the lab station. All right. Um, 
I'm really tempted to show you the video of me cleaning it because it's so important. But we will um, fast forward, cut to the chase. All right. There's a lab table, nice, cleanly mopped up. Look at that. I'm such a good student. Look at that. All right, we're going to do some of the uh, data processing in just a little bit. Hello, class. What we got going right now is the data processing. This is one of the most exciting parts of science. So what we have is the mass of the anhydrous substance we're trying to figure out. We know that the mass of the anhydrous substance plus the evaporating dish is 47.79. So what we're going to have to do is take that mass and subtract the mass of the evaporating dish to just get the mass of the anhydrous. So it's going to be 47.79 minus 45.34. Um, let's just do it in the calculator this morning. Nobody wants to do freehand math. 47.79 minus 45.34. 2.45, all right. 2.45 grams is the mass of the anhydrous. Is that different than the mass of the hydrate? Yes. So the difference is the water that was evaporated. So I'm going to do my 3.87. That's the mass of my hydrate minus my 2.45. That's the mass of my anhydrate or anhydrous. And I'm going to do 3.87 minus 2.45, getting 1.42. That is the mass of the water that escaped. Now that I have all of this data, I can figure out what is the percent of water in the hydrate. Um, I can calculate the percent of anhydrous. I can determine the number of moles of water, um, which is, yeah, determine the number of moles. I'm going to convert grams to moles. I can do all of that. One thing I do want to go over with you guys, um, I'm going to let you guys do that on your own, and we can go over it in class. But, um, Let's see. Check with Mr. Hebner for the theoretical empirical formula. Calculate the theoretical percent of water. You should have heated off. All right. So I already told you at the beginning of the video, copper sulfate um, got 5H2O. That is the, the, that's, that's the uh, hydrate we're dealing with. Um, so that's our accepted. And we want to figure out theoretical percent of water that we should have heated off. So we're going to have to find the masses of five water molecules divided by the mass of CuSO4 plus the five water molecules. The whole thing, uh, part divided by a whole times 100 is percent. So we're going to need a little thing called the periodic table. i got to look up the mass of oxygen. Uh, it's hard to see on the video. I'll just let you know it's 16. And H is 1. So we got H2, then it's going to be 1 plus 1. Plus 16 is 18. So I'm going to do 18 times 5, which I'm pretty sure is 90. Is my math right? 18 times 5. 90. All right. So 90 is at the top. So we'll do 90. And we got to figure out what's on our bottom. So 90 plus the CuSO4. So Cu is. That's 63.5, 63.5, and then I know sulfur is 32.1, if you don't believe me, it's right there, 32.1. Um, and oxygen is 16, we said, and there's four of them, which 16 times 4 is about 64. 64 plus 32.1 plus 63.5. That's about 159.6, but don't forget, we got to add the 90 grams of the five water molecules because that's part of the hydrate as well. So 249.6. 249.6. That is the mass of our entire hydrate. So if we do 90 divided by 249.6 times 100, we're going to get our percent of water. Let's 
here times 100 equals 36.1. That is our theoretical percent of water, 36.1. So if we go back and figure out what our percent of um, water is in the entire hydrate experimentally, it should be 36.1. The closer you are to 36.1, the better your experimental procedure and data collection techniques work. If you don't get close, that's fine. Don't worry about it. This is just practice. We're learning how to do science here. All right, that's all I have. So um, we're going to go over the rest of the stuff, um, you on your own. And um, if you got questions, we will just ask me. Um, and we're definitely going to cover it next time we see each other. All right, till next time, have a good one.